Hi everybody, this is Chad, the Gaming Dad with Dad's Games. And for this video, I'm going to weigh in on something that a lot of people have been voicing their opinions about. It's the bad word of the day. DLC. Alright, DLC, otherwise known as downloadable content. It should just be DC, but that's a downloadable is one word. But we're going we're gonna to make it two letters, DLC. Whatever. Everybody initially hates it. People still hate it. And the problem is, is, is it getting abused or is it a good thing? Which is it? Well, in order to understand any kind of argument, you have to look at both sides of the coin, right? So, first off, I'm going to start off by playing Devil's Advocate. I'm going to try to explain the point of view that the game developers have and maybe why they're doing it. Of course, it's because of money, but the root of it started with something that was eh, probably valid. Okay, so let's go all the way back to the original games, the Ataris, the Intellivisions, heck, even go to the NES if you want to, all that stuff. Those games, especially the early ones from Intellivision and Atari and that, they didn't have a huge staff. They didn't have that many people. And I mean, sometimes these games were developed by one guy. It wasn't something that took an entire staff to do. I mean, heck, watch the credits on any of the latest games that come out once you get to the end. It's as long as a movie, sometimes longer, sometimes more people, and for more years working on a game. So... Think about back in the day, the games that you bought back then were $40, $50 usually, even in the 80s and in the 90s and in the 2000s and 2010. You get where I'm going here. It's only been the last generation, the PS3 and the Xbox 360, that games went to $60. Okay? Let me do a little bit of a quick, quick lesson for you here just so you can understand what's going on. In 1980, I looked it up and I did the math. In 1980, $50 was worth $142.43 now. So what that means is back then you paid $50 for a game, but that same $50 that you paid could have bought you $142 worth of stuff today. That's how valuable $50 was back then. Then we move ahead, go to 1990. We're getting into like toward the end of the NES and beginning to Sega Genesis, things like that. Those games were also about $50. Back in 1990, the $50 you spent then would now be worth $89.79. So $90, right? So as you see, the dollar that you spend on your games is getting less and less valuable. And the games that you're buying are becoming bigger and bigger and more expensive to produce. Now, the trade-off a little bit is there's a lot more people buying and a lot more people playing games these days than there were back then, but there were a lot of people buying them back then. Those guys were just making money hand over fist. I mean, imagine if you went into your local game store and everything on the shelf was $150 on the box. That's basically what it was back in the 80s when you'd go buy an Atari game. 50 bucks? Wow. So the valid point that game developers and people who produce games, people who publish games, all that, the point that they have is that, hey man, we got a hundred times, maybe a thousand times more staff and costs put into making a game and we're making less than half of what it was basically selling for in the 80s. So of course they come up with this idea of DLC. Now, it doesn't cost a company as much to make more of something. Starting from scratch is what costs a lot. All the development, all of the time that goes into creating this world and the characters and everything like that. DLC should not cost them a whole lot more to make. So, here's where the, here's where the real gray area is, the fine line. If you have downloadable content that is made after the game is finished you get a game on disc and it's done and you have the whole game on disc for sixty dollars then later on they come out with DLC 
where they add a whole new story, an extra level, this, that. I'm thinking of maybe like First Light, okay? On the PS4, we have uh, Infamous Second Son, and then the DLC is First Light. It's a whole new character, same city, but a whole new story, a new character and everything. So for $15, you buy that, and that gives you basically a whole new game to play. It's like getting two games. I mean, we wait years and years and years for sequels. I hate waiting years and years and years for sequels to come out for games that I like. I wish they gave us more content, more missions, and more stuff for some of the best games that I played. You know? Zelda? Anybody? Stuff like that? How many years do you have to wait in between good good games like that? Think about it. When they made, when they made Ocarina of Time on the N64... The next year, basically, they came out with Majora's Mask. Kind of a DLC, if you think about it, because it was the same world, basically. A lot of the same assets, graphics, and things like that. Just a whole new way to play it, so it was a totally different game. Nobody really complained about that. Alright, so now we come to the point that everybody's making, and I agree with. This is terrible. You get a game on day one, you bring it home, you pop it in, and there's already stuff to buy that they, you know, they were working on it while they were making the game. They know it's done. They just didn't want, they just didn't want you to buy something for $60 and be happy with it. They wanted you to buy something for $60 and then go, oh crap, half of it's missing. I need to pe spend another $30 to finish it off. Mortal Kombat X, right? You don't have to buy the extra guys, I know. You don't have to buy the extra guys. But if you really like that game, every time you start the game, right in the middle of the screen is a picture of Goro saying, go to the shop and buy me. Hey, buy me. Right? And then they put out these other characters. Yeah. The other characters are going to be cool. I want to play as Predator. And heck, Mortal Kombat X is a great game. It's one of the best Mortal Kombats that you can play. It's really good. But all the nickel and diming? Come on, guys. At least with the additional characters, you're buying something that you get to play with. But they put up there the stuff, buying easy fatalities. Every time you use one, it's gone. So for five bucks, you get, what, 30 of them or something? So you can play for like an afternoon and have a whole bunch of fun killing your friends with easy fatalities over and over again. But then you're out, you're five or six bucks or whatever, and you don't have any more easy fatalities, and you still don't know how to do the fatality. You still can't really play the game. You've been cheating the whole time, and now you're stuck at the beginning again going, I don't know how to play this. Oh yeah, it used to be cool, but now I can't do the cool stuff because i got to pay again. If you buy that stuff, you're asking for it. In my opinion, if somebody gives you something to buy, something of value, something that's going to be additional content, additional gameplay, building on top of what they already had, which was supposed to be a finished game if they give you that that's great the best example that i've seen of any of this has been the mario kart 8 downloadable content there are some things that they pushed out for free the updates to the menus and things like that but the 200 cc mode is a total game changer and then you don't have to pay for that that's just there but the extra guys they didn't just sell you the individual characters to play as. There's 16 new tracks in in the two DLC packs with everything else, and they're great tracks. They're fun, and then it extends the life of that game by a ton. And how much was that to buy them both together? Like 12 bucks or something? They're not even charging you $30. They're giving you more content than the guys who charge you $30 for DLC, and they're not even charging $30. They're only charging like 12 That's how you do it. So basically what I want to say, and my two cents, is go ahead, I understand game companies, I understand that you need to make money, and I know that $60 is not going quite as far as it used to, and you need to sell us more stuff. If you put a $100 game on the shelf, it's going to sit there and collect dust. Nobody's going to plunk down $100 on a brand new game. I mean, almost nobody. But if you get them a game for $60 and they kind of like it, and they have something else to buy, they'll buy it. But make it stuff that we want to buy. Don't be ripping us off.
Don't send things out there that are just... I don't, I don't even know what to say. It's just crap. It's garbage. You're putting stuff out there for people to buy that you know is a complete ripoff and a waste of their time and money. I know it's making money for you, but in the end, if you do that over and over and over again, you're going to burn a lot of people and you're going to burn it and burn it and burn it. Just like the old days in the 80s with the Atari. They were on top of the world. They owned the whole place. They ruled the world. And then it all came crashing down because all everybody got were games that were worse and worse, cost just as much as the good games, and they were burned too many times. And suddenly they're like, you know what? It ain't worth it anymore. I'm not paying this stuff. I'm not playing. Took their ball and went home. When it comes to downloadable content, there's good and there's bad. If somebody comes out with something that's good, that's worth your time and money, and it's actually of value to you and extends your game and adds something to what you already have, that's a win for me. That's like getting the next game early. That's awesome. Don't sell us garbage. Don't sell us cheats to beat the game better or something like that. That's just... That's cheap. Bush League. Whatever you want to call it. It's a ripoff. And it's going to damage the industry as a whole over time. It's going to hurt it. So don't do that. So that's it for today. I am Chad the Gaming Dad. We're going to have lots more videos coming soon. Go ahead and give me a like. Subscribe. Comment. Let me know some things you'd like to see on the channel. And I'll see you next time on Dad's Games. So long, everybody. Hey.